Hey Harmonizers, welcome to this video with Arwen going to his first mountain trail show. I went down to New York for the weekend. We did uh, in hand classes only. So I'm gonna take you through his last class of the day first so you can see how he kind of finished off. And then later in the video, I'm gonna show you how he worked through some of the issues that he had and show you his walk trot class as well. So this class, I was really lucky. We did the exact same class twice because they had the same pattern for adults and open for the level one, which means it's all walking. And you're gonna see a lot of really cool obstacles in this uh, video. The course, the park is uh, really quite a neat park. Lots of different things going on. and. One of the things that I want you to notice is how I try my best to line Arwen up to the center. And what I love about Arwen is that he's very slow and very patient, which is very handy because I am eight months pregnant in this uh, video here. And so having him be nice and patient for me is definitely very, very key. And uh, that was really nice that he was willing to go slow with me. And it's a really big park with lots of hills. So that bridge in particular that you just saw us cross that was one of the obstacles that caused us problems and later on in the video you're going to see how like what that kind of looked like for him and how he worked through that but what i like about what you can see in this video is just how nice this last course kind of finished up for him and you can see that he's really nice and relaxed and that's kind of the key is I'm training him for hopefully doing extreme cowboy competitions once I've had my baby and uh, August comes and hopefully I'll be back to riding and doing different things. So we're doing this in hand because I'm not riding right now, but I really want to just get him to a place where he's confident going off and doing things by himself. And this here is a rock scramble. So the idea is that he's supposed to kind of pick his way around the rocks and just kind of handy for him to be able to watch his feet and watch where he's going. So they have different types of obstacles that you go over as well as things like this for the rock scramble. So if you have a place at home that's a little bit rocky and you thought that you couldn't do anything with it, well now you know you can make a rock scramble out of it. There's always lots of different types of obstacles that you can do. And one of the biggest things for competing, whether you're doing mountain trail or you're gonna do extreme cowboy, or even if you just wanna go trail riding with your horse and not compete, you need your horse calm and relaxed. And so that's really what I'm looking for here. And you can see when he's going over the obstacles, he's very relaxed, very calm, very centered. And that's really gonna help me when we do get to the riding stuff and we do more competitions because he's going to have that attitude already of we can do this and mom wants me to be relaxed. So my favorite types of shows to go to are ones like this that are a little bit more quiet. There weren't a ton of people there. We were allowed to take our time and they had lots of different classes. So I was able to enter more than one because right now you guys are seeing the finished product. This is his last class of the day, but you're going to see in a second when we're done this pattern and I show you the one before this where we actually had quite a few issues. And so here, especially, uh, you'll see him go through the water, which was something that I was really worried about. And with your horse, you really set them up for failure if you take them to an event before they're ready. And let's say we went to do that water obstacle and I only had 30 seconds to get him through it and he didn't, well, then he's going to leave not having done the obstacle. And that is probably one of the worst things you can do. Even if you're watching this and you're not somebody who does obstacles, you're somebody who, who does jumps and you're a hunter jumper, same thing. If you take your horse to a horse show before they're ready, where they're going to be strict about the two refusals and your out rule, that's not going to be good for your horse. It'd be much better to go to a more schooling type show where they're going to be lenient about the two refusal rule and often they'll let your horse refuse more than a few times as long as it's not dangerous or anything like that because it is much better for your horse to get over all of the obstacles or all of the jumps before uh, they leave the ring otherwise they leave feeling one like a bit of a failure but two also that if they um if they don't do something that you're not gonna follow through and get them to do it later so i always want to make sure that i pick uh, events like this 
where it's going to be more of a schooling type show where I know they're going to be relaxed. But more importantly, too, that there's multiple classes. And this really worked out for me really great because this same exact pattern we got to do twice because I put them in both the adult and the open. Once I saw that they were going to be the same pattern, I wanted him to do them both. And then that way, if we struggled with something, I knew that we had an opportunity to fix it. So here you can see he struggles a little bit going into the ditch still. Not super horrible when I, uh, we're almost done this pattern here and then I'll show you what he looked like on the one before this. So you can see how much more stressed he was and having this opportunity to do this second round where he could go in and get his confidence up. Really, really good opportunity for him to leave it on a much, much better note than had we only had the opportunity to do the one class. So when I go to Extreme Cowboy, often I can only do one class because I can only do pro. You can't do both green horse and pro. So it's nice to be able to go to this show where we could do a variety of things. So there's two hard obstacles right in a row for Arwen. One is that ditch, which is scary. And then this is the splash box. Splash boxes are scary because they have a floating board in them with holes and when you step on it water pops through the holes so it can be a little intimidating for horses and you can see he was still not a hundred percent on that but he didn't leap right up into the air which you're gonna see him do in a second when we go to the the next clip and again like what a fantastic opportunity that he could go and do that course twice when we hear people talk about setting up for success, we hear a lot of clinicians say that, a lot of horsemen say that. To me, that means, what can you do to help your horse set it up in such a way that you can make it as easy for them as possible? Or that even if it goes south, that you're still gonna be able to end on a positive note. Because that's really important for horses that they have the opportunity to find that good note otherwise it's just going to be bad for everybody in the long run so you can see he's he's picking at the bugs a little bit we are not used to bugs where we are we are lucky at our farm that we don't have any bugs whatsoever um like a few normal flies but not any bugs so he was a little bit irritated with those but i'm really proud of him even though he was irritated with the bugs and this was his first time doing an outdoor obstacle course like this he was still pretty focused and he was aware of his feet so I was pretty uh, excited for that to see um, just how well he was doing and also with the water obstacles too I knew that those were going to be a challenge for him I knew that water is not his most favorite thing in the world so the fact that he was able to get through those pretty easily I was pretty impressed with him that it wasn't such a, a super big deal here and when I show you this second clip um, don't worry, I'm not going to take you through the entire course again. I'm just going to cut forward to the parts where he really struggled. Uh, and if it was good the first time, then I figure you don't need to see it twice. But this is the last obstacle here, which is a backup obstacle, which he was a little bit tricky with. Not horrible. He probably did it about the same both times where he kind of hit the post a little bit and I had to convince him to move over a little bit. So that's something that I'm going to want to take home and practice a little bit more because I do do backups with him, but not necessarily tall backups like this. And that adds a little bit of a different visual effect to the horse when it's up high, especially because he's so little. So it makes it uh, really up high on him. But that is his first run. He gets a little cookie for finishing his course really good. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys the tough parts. So this is one of the tough parts here. It's going over that bridge that I showed you guys. And you can see he kind of stops and he's like, well, I don't know about that. So that was his third time, I think, doing the bridge. And you're gonna see another clip in a second from a different course where he struggles as well. And so here with the water, you can see he goes to follow me around the water. And I just have to do a little bit of convincing to say, you can go in. Now he did get to do this as part of the practice in the morning. And then he went back to his stall for a few hours after lunch, we came back and did this, this pattern here. 
so it had been a while but he had gone through it already so it just took a little bit of convincing but he was pretty good even the the first time that he did it he um didn't give me anywhere near as much grief as I thought he was going to give this one here is probably our hardest obstacle of them all it is a trench going down so it's kind of scary for them because they're going down into a ditch but what makes it more scary is that it's kind of muddy and the horses don't know how muddy it is for a horse that lives in the wild especially these mustangs they have to be so careful about the mud because horses actually can get stuck in the mud and you see posts on facebook all the time about these horses that get stuck they have to be pulled out by fire trucks and stuff it can be a serious danger or there could be um bad you know predators hanging out around here so arwin came from arizona originally that was the herd that he was rounded up in and i'm not really sure what is in arizona but i know when you start going south they have like poisonous water snakes i know there's crocodiles in florida i don't know what there is out in arizona but water is often a source of danger for mustangs and there's actually um one study on uh mustang hooves and the horse's hooves are more triangular shape but the reason for that is they don't want to go near the water so they paw until they dig for water because they don't want to go up to the water's edge because of all the predators that are there and the dangers that are there so his fear is rational and so if you can see in my approach my approach is very much i'm going to try to stand my ground and not change the question that i'm asking of you and my attitude is very much i believe in you arwen you can do this and if he's not trying or he's kind of pushing on me or he's trying to go to the side then I'm kind of pulling his halter forward a little bit and trying to guide him forward as well as potentially using my tail which is what I call the end of my rope and uh, when he starts to go I try to make sure I get myself up into the rock because I don't want to um, go down with him and you can see he's not too impressed with that idea and uh, my thoughts are just staying the same of you can do this you can do this and then there you can see my posture really relaxes because the moment that he goes to try and actually sniff the ground and kind of investigate a little bit then I want to allow him the opportunity to do that I don't want to stay pushing him and forcing him and making him do things that he's not ready to do I simply say try try do your best and then you know you go when you're ready and so this is where the benefit of being at a show like this was so handy because in a lot of obstacle shows you only have 30 seconds to uh, sometimes the rule is you have 30 seconds to make progress on the obstacle sometimes that you have 30 seconds to complete the obstacle and then you're whistled on so for example the versatility challenge that i do at equine affair uh, that i was a reserve champion in last year with uh, trivia time that competition is in front of thousands of people they're very strict about the rules and you're expected to be very good by the time you get there so here arwen i was able to take my time i was able to help him and then you already saw the first clip the first clip that i showed was him doing it the second time so you got to see that it went much better and quicker the second time and that just kind of goes to show that if you take the time you will build the horse up and they'll gain confidence all right get ready for this guys ready kaboing <laughs> so that was uh arwen's reaction to the board moving and you can't blame the poor guy okay you know it looks like a solid bridge you step on it it drops water goes rushing through it but look at look at how confident he gets afterwards i am very proud of him for that so he was really scared in the beginning you can't blame him for leaping up in the air and uh, it's a good thing i wasn't on his back but then you can see there's much more confident afterwards so i was pretty proud of him for that so this next video that i'm going to show you here is arwin doing his walk trot pattern and this is interesting just because you can see uh, the next level of training so this is a level two pattern with walk trot and the reason why trot makes things harder even though you're not necessarily trotting the obstacles you're trotting between obstacles is because now you're practicing energy up energy down and this is one of the most important skills for horses to learn that are going to 
participate in obstacle sports, but it's also just a really good skill for horses to learn in general is picking energy up and picking energy down. For example, for some horses that just go trail riding and they're not even competing, they start going off on a canter or something and then sometimes they get really excited and they can't settle down and then they can't walk the rest of the trail, right? So practicing energy up, energy down is really important. Now I'm lucky that most of this jogging was either on flat ground or going downhill because it was a little hard to jog and I'm also very appreciative that Arwen does not run particularly fast so I did not have to go super fast. But what we're looking at here is his ability to trot between the objects and then be able to slow down and still do the obstacles accurately. And this can be something that you practice at home with your horse to practice that energy up, energy down can be really, really helpful for them. Even if, again, you're not an obstacle person, but you're a hunter jumper or something like that, you can practice cantering some jumps and then slowing your horse down and trotting other jumps or trotting pulls. It just helps reinforce that communication piece and that relaxation piece of can I bring you up and then can I bring you back down. So here we're able to see that Arwen's doing a really fantastic job where he's bringing his energy up and he's trotting with me really nicely. Uh, he's not like rushing into the trot and I'm also not having to really pull him to get him back to the walk. And then he's able to focus on the obstacles that I'm asking him to do. Of course, right as I say that, there was a moment where he looked off to the side because I think Bling was calling for him. Bling was in the stall at this time and Bling was not very happy about the situation, you could say. And uh, But overall, he's doing a really, really good job being able to uh, focus and that's really what it's all about and here is uh, the other look at the bridge so uh, here you're gonna see he he starts to go on it and then he's like what look how far down that is I'm not going on that are you crazy and so I take the same approach that I did with the um, the ditch although it didn't take as long this time where I just kind of kept my gentle pressure on the halter. I didn't really add more force or anything like that, but I just kind of had the attitude of, you can do this. Notice how my energy didn't change. I didn't start like whacking at him or anything like that. My body just said, you know, of course you can do this. And that's what I want my horses to believe is that if I say you can do this, you really can do it. So uh, one more obstacle to go in this pattern here. It's a trotting obstacle. I switched sides so that way it'd be easier for him to do the turn there. And that was his walk trot pattern. I forget if that was the junior horse pattern or if that was uh, the love or the, the adult class. I can't remember. But this would be the opposite of whichever one was which. So I'm going to show you one more pattern before we wrap up this video. It's also a walk trot pattern. It's a different pattern and it's got some really cool different obstacles at the end. It's a different set of the park that we go into. This park that we're on is actually one and a half acres and they were telling us that um, in a couple months they're going to be adding another half acre to the park. So this place is going to be huge. Two acres of obstacles and just a lot of variety. It's an IMTCA course which is the International Mountain Trail Association and uh, that's the one that was started by Mark Bolander and they have um, IMTCA classes that you can do and you can try to qualify for finals and stuff and there's different parks in the United States as well as in Canada. It's not as big as uh, Extreme Cowboy, I don't think, not yet, but super super fun. Although installing one of these parks is probably pretty pricey if you look at all the landscaping and a lot of the work that's involved. It's just beautiful, but probably not very doable for a lot of places necessarily so definitely appreciative to have a place like this that we can come and play on and i'm excited for you guys to see these extra obstacles near the end of this video here and so the way i did this with my horses is um so here's a couple different obstacles you didn't see yet i don't think um is my horses i did the one set of classes and i kept my other horse in the stall and then i swapped horses so they had to be okay with being apart from each other, which is a really good test as well. This little obstacle here, we're doing the ladder. This is a really cool one that I think a lot of places could add to their facility if you wanted to. Uh, and it just helps get the horse thinking about where their feet are. 
And those are fixed in place, if you're wondering. So here we are going to cross into a different part of the uh, obstacle area that we haven't gone over to yet. And I'm just trying to keep him in the middle of the obstacles as best I can. One of the things that you need a little bit of practice with when you're doing these types of things is giving your horse the room to do the obstacle so you don't make them anxious and you don't cause them to mess up. But being short enough on your lead rope and guiding your horse that you keep their nose pointed at the center of the obstacle. So like that there on the suspension bridge, you want to be careful that your horse doesn't fall off the side on that. So you want to make sure that you're guiding them and not too loose on your rope, especially when they're learning. So that way the horse stays straight. And then here we go on the other balance beam here. Some of the obstacles were wood on top. Some of them had a, a bit of a rim to them and were filled with gravel. And then down here to this other obstacle, it's kind of like a giant pinwheel, huge. We do some of these in extreme cowboy racing too, but they're much smaller <laughs> and asking him to go around there. So I was pretty happy with that. And then we're gonna work our way up. We have one more obstacle to finish the course. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching little Arwen do his very first mountain trail course. And if you have any questions or comments, I would love to see them. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and let me know what you guys like seeing, what you want to see next on their adventures. Bling was also at this competition, so I will be doing her video afterwards. And you'll get a chance to see what she looked like. She was uh, very good at the obstacles, but a little bit more anxious about being away from Arwen because they can bond in the trailer. So anyways, you're going to see I was like tired here. But thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you later.